guys, welcome back to another video. Today we wanted to share some tips and tricks for taking the best photos of your dog, specifically for Instagram. We get a lot of questions through DM and email asking on what equipment we should use, if I have any tips for taking better photos of the dogs. Today I thought I would share some of the things I've learned from taking photos of Kokoro and Chibi throughout the years. So I didn't start taking photos until I think it was 2013 when this little nugget came into our lives. The photos that I took of her when she was a puppy, they weren't that pretty. <laughs> They kind of looked like this. There were shots where I was way too close to her, the angles were kind of weird, the shadow and the lighting was weird. Back then I was shooting on a Panasonic Lumix GF3 um, with a portrait lens and I knew very little about the right equipment and so things just started to grow from there. One of the first things that will make your life a lot easier is teaching your dog a good sit and stay. You really want to master this. Teach it to them from when they're a puppy, regardless of whether you're gonna take photos of them or not. It's just really good basic obedience, but it makes things a lot easier when your dog has a really confident sit, stay, and you can trust that they will stay there until you release them for your photo. Once your dog has a good sit, you can work up the difficulty level and practice with some distractions. So put them in a sit, stay, throw some treats around them, make weird noises, throw words at them that aren't their release word. You can even have strangers walk by and mimic what might happen when you're taking photos of your dogs in the wild. So number one, master the sit and stay. The next set of tips is geared around getting the best expressions out of your dogs. So teach them how to bark is a really good way to get them to change up their expression when they're just sitting or set up in a position where you want to photograph them. Teaching them to bark on cue and using bursts to capture their entire facial expressions from when their mouths are closed and when they're open usually get some pretty good results. Also know your dog's trigger words. So for example, with our dogs, if we say, do you want or is it time for, and using the words dinner and treat, it really gets them to be engaged and have them look directly at the camera where you're shooting. Sometimes, if I'm lucky, I even get a head tilt out of it. So use your dog's trigger words, words that they like, talk to them and communicate with them as you're shooting. This also helps a lot when you're out and about shooting your dogs where there's other distractions around. A lot of the times we run into situations where Kokoro's ears are folded back and I kind of think that they're cuter when they're facing forward, facing the camera, so using these trigger words usually gets her to turn her ears towards me and it makes for a better shot. Don't forget to use squeakers and sounds to your advantage. I, for one, am not really that great at making animal sounds, so I usually keep a squeaker or a small toy that they really like in my pocket or in my bag and I can just pull that out and squeak it to get their attention. Don't be afraid to use multiple tactics because your dog might get tired or bored of that trigger. They might not respond to you asking them 10 times if it's dinner time. So having a few different devices is usually helpful. Another great way to get them to have some really funny facial expressions is to use peanut butter or honey or yogurt or something that's sort of like a gooey liquid that you can put on their noses. This is one of our favorite tricks. You're bound to get one or two gold gems out of this. One thing that you can also do is decide on a consistent style that represents you and your work. So for us, it's very clean and bright and minimal and airy. I like taking photos with a lot of white space and that's something that I've been working on since we started photographing Kokoro. It's nice when your body of work sort of reflects the same consistent aesthetic and style. So it could be that maybe you wanna take action shots of your dogs while you're out hiking and you have a really low aperture and gorgeous bokeh. Whatever the style is, sticking to one for a while and practicing it will help you improve your photography and editing skills. All right, so lighting. Lighting is the next thing I wanna talk about. Daylight is your friend. Especially with photographing animals, natural sunlight works really, really well for bringing out the highlights in their eyes, really complementing their fur. We take pretty much all of our photos during the daytime with natural lighting. Um, a lot of the photos that we take at home are close to a window where natural light can get in. Sunlight really is your friend and dogs just shoot amazingly in natural lighting. This doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use studio lighting. A lot of professional photographers make amazing portraits of dogs with studio lighting. It's just a little trickier to get it in the right positioning for them to look good all the time. And if you're just taking photos for Instagram, I highly recommend you use as much natural light as you can. When you're outside, we love a good sunny day, especially here in LA, but try to stay in the shade. If there's too much harsh sunlight coming directly onto your dog, there might be a lot of harsh shadows from their ears. So we always try to look for a shaded area when we're out and about taking photos of the dogs outdoors. 
Our next tip for getting really creative, unique photos is playing with different angles. This is really something that I've been working on for many, many years, trying to figure out what cool new angles and perspectives I can use to share photos of the dogs. For example, I have this one photo where I put the camera inside the bottom of a glass jar, stacked some treats around the edges of it, and had the dogs wait until I released them, and then told them, okay, go get the treat, and as soon as they put their noses into the glass jar, I snapped some photos. So you really got this cool perspective of them looking down into the jar. There are also other cool trends that I've noticed, including covering your dog's face and really just having their snout show and using some sort of props. So we've done it with Peeps for Easter, we've done it for Christmas, and it just makes for a really cute and unique photo that when you're scrolling through your feed, the person kind of goes, oh, what's that? Just always try to think about different ways that you can get unique angles and different perspectives to really highlight the personality of your dog. A really good general rule of thumb is get on your dog's level. So a lot of times I will get on my stomach even if I'm outside to get a really good shot straight on to them. You can also play with top down or bird's eye view angles which works really well on Instagram as well. When you're shooting, utilize the burst mode or even video to capture shots. Especially with dogs, they're constantly moving, their expressions are changing. So it's a really good idea to utilize burst so that you're capturing as many frames as possible and that you have a lot of shots to pick from to share. Some of the best shots on my Instagram are actually frames taken from videos. So for example, this photo of Kokoro, I wanted to get a shot of her different facial expressions as confetti was falling on her for a birthday themed photo. But I didn't have enough hands to throw the confetti, take the burst shots, and manage where she was sitting all at the same time. So I ended up setting up my camera on a tripod, putting it on video, and then throwing the confetti to capture just the video. And in the end, I just pulled this one frame from the video that was shot. The only thing to know with video is that you're not gonna get as high quality of an image when you're pulling a frame. And luckily that's not really a big issue because for Instagram, you're just exporting at 1080 by 1080 pixels. Another thing that we run into a lot, especially with Chibi, is she takes working very seriously. So photo shoots are like work for her, and so she tends to get this very serious look on her face. She closes her mouth and she's just focused on what do I need to do to get the treat. So a lot of the times to get her to smile, I'll take a, her favorite toy, play some tug with her for about five minutes, or even just run up and down the hallway with her for a few laps. And once you get them sort of running and panting, that looks like a nice, happy smile that you can capture for your photo. Okay, the next tip is something I strongly believe in. Don't be afraid to edit to tell a good story. So I know there's a lot of stuff out there about photoshopping and faking images, especially with models and travel images and sort of just selling this false idea. Especially with dogs, I feel like this is kind of an area where you have an opportunity to edit and tell an even better story. So before I got into photography, I actually was much more of an avid user of Photoshop. With a lot of my photos, I will use editing to clean it up a little bit, take out things that I don't want in the photo, sometimes even swap out a dog's face. If I'm taking a photo of Kokoro and Chibi and one looks good on one shot and the other good looks in the other shot, I'll sort of merge them together so that that one last photo that I'm sharing is telling the story that I want it to. Don't be afraid to think of an idea and take a photo that isn't actually gonna be what you're gonna end up sharing. If it's sort of a good stepping stone towards the story that you wanna tell, go for it. One of the examples on my feed is this photo of Kokoro and this bike and the balloons. I really wanted to showcase a sort of whimsical feeling of having the bike or Kokoro being lifted by the balloons. So we got the bike, we got the balloons, and we tied it to the bike and my partner actually held the bike up and I ended up photoshopping him out in the end to get the end result. Using the right equipment is also very important and this is something that took me a lot of time to learn. As I said before, I'm not a professional photographer. I'm just sort of learning things as I go via YouTube and Google and learning from other photographers on Instagram. When I first started taking photos of Kokoro, I was essentially using a mirrorless camera that had the equivalent of a 90 millimeter focal length. As that number for the focal length goes up, the further away you have to be from your subject. So imagine having a puppy that's restless, that's moving a lot, and then you set them in their spot, and then you have to back up six to eight feet to even take a good shot of them. 
you're likely gonna lose that opportunity in the time that you're backing up. So having a lens with a shorter focal length will allow for you to be closer to the dog when you're taking the photo. A lot of the shots on my Instagram over the past few years have been taken on this camera. It is a Lumix GX8 Micro Four Thirds camera. The lens that I have on here is a 20 millimeter f1.7. And so this is actually a really good focal length for being really close to the dog. And because the f-stop is so low, we can get that really nice soft background effect. The last tip that I have for you guys is their favorite tip. Give your dog lots and lots of treats. So we always treat, <laughs> did I say the word? I said the word treat. We always treat photo shoots as working time and training time for the dogs. So whenever we have them do anything for a photo, they always get rewarded with tons and tons of praise and treats. Ultimately, you don't want to make your dog do anything that they don't want to do, and you just want the photo shoot to be a good experience for both you and them. That wraps it up for the tips that we have to share this week on taking the best photos of your dog, specifically for Instagram. Thank you guys for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave us a question or a comment if you have any of your own tips to share or have any ideas or requests for videos in the future. Bye!